Hello, Great Time Mind Sitters, and welcome to it. This is another awesome, beautiful show, Revision, just for you. My name is AB, and I'm joined by Lizzo. It's been a while. Lizzo, how are you? I'm absolutely fine. I'm very happy to be back. Been very busy in school, <laughs> but it's nice to connect with the Mind Sitters again, do some revision, get everybody ready for that exam <laughs> that's just around the corner. <laughs> I like that. Sorry, my producer is making me laugh, but otherwise, it's, it's so great. Unja and Ngoto, we are Pilawin. I'm sharp. <laughs> I'm sharp. All right. Well, <laughs> let me tell the mind sitters about this awesome competition because during this show, maybe after the first ad break, we'll be giving away one of these awesome uh, Galaxy Note 8, probably brought to you by Samsung. It is. Uh, it has this S pen, which is a nice pen, very flexible. You can write using it. It's more like a pen. That's how nice it is. It has an 8. 0 0.0 LCD screen, which is the screen that you can see. It has 1.8 gigahertz of your CPU central pro processing unit, which is so fast it processes me its memory. It's very, very fast. And then a multi window. You can work on multi different wi windows. At the same time, you can open your pictures, have your video, have your notes, have your pictures, have your Facebook, and interact with us as Mindset. So we're giving away one of these. For you to be on the lucky draw, all you need to do is to download tonight's notes. The, the, link, the link is on, on, on Facebook. And then uh, put on the race number. We have a race number at the end of the page. And then the website is mindset.co.zm forward slash learn forward slash win because we want you to win. Otherwise, let's interact on facebook.com uh, forward slash learn extra. Lizzo, all right, God. Lungile. Right. All right, guys. So um, tonight we're having a look at some extracts from the 2012 papers and exemplars. So that's really cool because these questions are very much like what you can expect in your exam at the end of the year. So mostly our focus is paper two tonight. So we're looking at trigonometry, we're looking at geometry, and we're also looking at some analytical geometry. Now, as Abram just said, the show notes are available. So download them. It makes you eligible for our competition, which is super cool. I wonder, can we enter? No, I need my to get myself one of those. <laughs> right, so without any further ado, let's get on to our first couple of questions. Right, so just we're going to talk today about how to simplify trig expressions, solve trig equations, and apply trig ratios to solve problems. Then we're going to have a look at Euclidean geometry. Guys, that's everybody's bugbear, but practice does make perfect. We're going to have a look at the geometry of quadrilaterals. We're specifically going to have a look at parallelograms, proving parallelograms, also the properties of parallelograms, and then finally, we're going to have a look at coordinate or analytical geometry, which fortunately isn't that difficult. Now, guys, for all three of these sections, you have to make sure that you've got them organized in grade 10 because next year you do a little bit more. The year thereafter in matric, you do a little bit more yet. So please, take the time, settle down, and study because you need this foundation. And most of these sections are pretty new to this year. Right. The good news is it does get easier. Right, now our first question involves special angles, and it says here, without using a calculator, determine the value of. Now, guys, it is kind of very hard for us teachers to tell, really, whether you use a calculator or not. So in grade 10, you could possibly still get away with using your calculator from the start. However, it's always a good idea to know how to do your special angles without a calculator. So your special angles are the angles 30, 45, and 60. Now, there's various different ways to do special angles if you don't have a calculator. The one method that I'm going to use tonight is the triangle method. What we'll do in the next lesson, we'll use some of the other method. There's a table method. There's another diagram method. It really doesn't matter which method you choose to use we'll all get to the same answer in the end. Right, so the question asks us to determine the value of sine 60 multiplied by tan 30 divided by sec 45. So this is the method that I like to use. I enjoy using the triangles, and here we go. Ooh, that doesn't look great. Let's undo that. Okay, now Abram, I, let's hope, ah, oh, there's my pen. 
Okay, so I'm going to start off with this triangle. Now, you do, need, you do need to know this triangle. I would say, wait, I'm struggling to get my pen working. Let's go. Okay, I'm redrawing the triangle. So, guys, this is basically what we do for the 30 degrees and the 60 degrees. It's one method. You start off with an equilateral triangle, and, of course, in an equilateral triangle, all the angles are 60 degrees. So 60, 60. Then we start off with all our sides being two units. Then we drop a perpendicular. And because it's an equilateral triangle, remember this is the case for equilateral and isosceles, what this perpendicular does is it halves those two sides and also we're halving the angle at the top there. So in short, this is our triangle 30, 60, 90 degrees, two units, one unit, and then by using Pythagoras, the remaining side is root three units, like that. All right. Now, we need to find the value of sine 60, so you should know that sine is opposite over hypotenuse or y over r. So if I place myself here at the 60 degree angle, I'm now standing over here, I am looking for my opposite side. The side opposite from me is root 3 over the hypotenuse. Remember, the hypotenuse is always across from the 90 degree angle, so that's root 3 over 2. Now, we can confirm that with our calculator, and this is the thing, guys. We probably won't know if you are doing this on your calculator. It's just my conscience that's telling me that I have to show you guys a way of doing it without a calculator. You never know when you'll be stuck on a desert island without a calculator, and you might want to be doing some tricks. So there we go. Sine, si sine 60 is then root 3 over 2. All right, now I'm going to move on to tan 30. Now I remove myself from here, and I place myself over here at the 30-degree angle. That's now my vantage point, and I say, right, Tan is opposite over adjacent, or y over x. So that's going to give me opposite to 30 is 1, right? So opposite is 1, adjacent is root 3. So that's 1 over root 3. I want to show you guys something quickly. If I then take my calculator and I do the same thing, I do tan 30, your calculator gives you an answer of root 3 over 3. So you guys might say, oh, Liesl's been off mindset for too long. She doesn't know anymore. But guys, actually, 1 over root 3 is equivalent to, what did we have here? Root 3 over 3. Basically, all we've done is something called rationalizing the denominator. So what we've done is we've multiplied the top and the bottom with root 3. And remember, by multiplying by, by root 3 over root 3, you're multiplying by 1, so you're not changing anything. And that then gives us root 3 over 3. So those two things are equivalent. Right, guys, and now we move on to sec of 45 degrees. Now, again, I know you guys are probably going to use a calculator. But hang on, in matric, when you write university entrance exams, you're actually not allowed a calculator. So it's nice to have some other method. You don't have to use the triangles. You can use any other diagram. So to do the 45 special angles, what I do is I make an isosceles triangle, 45 and 45, and the length of each side is 1. And then by Pythagoras, the hypotenuse will be root 2. So... For instance, if I now want to do sine of 45, that is opposite over hypotenuse, so that's 1 over root 2. In our question, however, we're going to do sec of 45. So, of course, sec is the inverse of cos. So, cos is x over r, so sec will be r over x. So, that's hypotenuse over adjacent. So, my hypotenuse is root 2, and my adjacent is 1. So that's going to be root 2 over 1. And guys, once you've shown 
your initial substitution, it's absolutely fine to now put these terms into a calculator. Um, what's going to happen here, though, I'm not going to use the calculator for that. The root threes are going to cancel, and I'm going to get a half. Then instead of dividing, I'm going to multiply, and I'm going to turn it around, and it's going to be root 2 over 1. I just want to check something quickly. Let's just make sure that we've worked correctly. We're going to say, let's start out with a bracket and a fraction. We're going to have root 3 over 2, close the bracket, open another bracket, another fraction, 1 over root 2, close the bracket again, and that's then divided by root 2 over 1. And there we get our final answer, and it appears that I might have made a mistake. I thought so, I did. Um, this is what I did wrong. Sorry, guys. If I multiply, I've been out of this for too long. I've got to turn it around. So, of course, it becomes 1 over root 2. So, there we go. So, it's root 3 over 2 for, um, for the sine of 60, 1 over root 3 for the tan of 30, and then for the sec 45, root 2 over 1. And here's our final answer. Your calculator will give your answer to you with a rationalized denominator. That really doesn't matter. Um, you can write it any way you want. I'm going to say 1 over 2 root 2. I can multiply top and bottom with root 2 over 2. So then I get root 2 at the top. And of course, root 2 times root 2 is 2 multiplied by the 2 that I have already, and I get 2 root 2 over 4. Right, I took a really long time for that question, guys. It is absolutely fine to use your calculator. I just wanted to show you another method. Just remember, your calculator doesn't have a button for sec. So you can't do sec 45 on your calculator. What you can do is you can do cos 45, and you can invert it because you know that they are inverses of each other. Abraham, how are we doing? Doing, How are we doing over there? We're doing well. Just the mindsetters need to find their notes and join us. Uh, I have a couple of mindsetters that are on the page, and I just want to acknowledge you guys, and thank you for the comments that you, you're giving us on the page, such as Boitumelo, Lerato, and Sanele, and Dumiso Zibani. Welcome. Yeah. Um, I've just been told that we can already take a break, but, but just a little bit before we get to the break, just to give the mindsetters a heads up on what's ahead. What we're going to do next is we're going to be solving equations. Now, guys, remember, when we solve trig equations, operation number one is that we want to isolate our sine, our cos, and our tan, or our tan, right? So what we want is that trig word, sine, cos, or tan, or it could be sec, cosec, or cot. We want that on its own on the left-hand side. That is our first step, and then we're going to look at using our calculator to go from the ratio into the actual answer, right? We're going to take a short break. We'll be back right after the break. Thank you so much, Lizal. And if you're struggling anywhere else, make sure that you also visit our Mix It at the help desk there. Submit your question, and we'll be there to help you. Otherwise, we'll see you after the break. Welcome back, Grade 10 Mindsetters. Now, if you're still struggling having any questions, feel free also to text us on Facebook. We are on facebook.com forward slash Len Extra. Also, like our, our follow us on Twitter at Len Extra. But in the meantime, this is all. Let's continue. I was just saying we need to get on with it. We've got lots of cool questions planned. Right, guys. So the next question says, solve for x correct to one decimal place um, for each of the following equations, and we're solving between 0 and 90, which will always be the case in Grade 10, thankfully. Right, so our first question, very straightforward and easy. We've got 5 cos x equal to 3. So we're just going to say cos x is equal to 3 over 5, right? So we've isolated the cos, and we're going to go straight away, grab our calculator, and we're going to go shift cos, arc cos, of 3 over 5, remembering then 
to give our answer to one decimal place. So now, cos x is 3 over 5, and we then get that angle x is 53,1 degrees. Guys, very important. Once you've worked, calculated the angle, don't write cos again, because it's not cos of the angle that's 53,1 degrees. It's the actual angle x that's 53,1 degrees. Right. Moving on to the second one. The second one, we've got tan 2x equal to 1,19. Now, guys, if we have a 2x or a 3x or a 5x or anything going on after the sine, cos, and tan, you can't do anything about it initially. So it's only if we have a number in front, like a 5 or a 3, that we divide through immediately. So what we're going to do is we're going to go straight into saying shift tan or arc tan, shift tan, of 1,19, and our answer is 49,95 degrees. Now, guys, that means that 2x is 49,95 degrees. Then we still need to solve for x, and try your best. Don't round off until the end. So I'm going to go back to my answer, divide it by 2, and I get 29,97. Now, guys, that's going to round to 25 comma zero degrees. So whenever we have a 2x or a 3x or a 5x, after our trig word, then we deal with that later. So we first get the ratio, we first get the angle on the calculator, and then we deal with that. Right. Moving on to the next one, we've got 4 sec x minus 3 is equal to 5. So I'm going to start out by saying, right, 4 sec x, and I'm going to take that minus 3 over to the other side, it's going to get added, so it's going to be 8, right? So I'm going to get that sec x is 8 over 4, which is 2 over 1, right? Or 2. Now, remember, our calculator doesn't have a sec button, so what we've got to do is the next best thing. We say, all right, if sec x is 2 over 1, then cos x must be 1 over 2. So when you've got a sec, a cosec, or a cot, you still simplify as far as you can, and then you invert both sides. So if I take sec to cos, I'm inverting, and I've got to do exactly the same thing on the other side. Again, you're going to take your calculator, you're going to go shift cos of a half, and you're going to get that x is equal to 60 degrees. Right, pretty straightforward, nothing really to it, not that much to worry about, I think, when, we have, when we're looking at trig equations. Let's move straight along. Right, now the next question is a more practical sort of a question where we're applying more of our trig knowledge to a practical situation. So for all of you that sit in class and say, oh, when am I ever going to use this? Well, this is a very practical example. If you're ever flying an airplane and the instrumentation breaks down, then you'll be happy to know a little bit of <laughs> trick. Right, Abram, how are we doing on the page before I get on to the next question? I love that. We're doing so well on the page, and I have some mind sitters who are giving their answers also. Uh, the previous question, they gave uh, their answers before you, so yeah. they're working we in We train them so well, they're quicker than the teachers. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we want to see. Okay, guys, so typically in your practical question, you're going to have a long story. Hopefully, they'll give us a sketch. That's kind of the nice thing to do so that you know what's happening. Right, so the question says... An aeroplane J is flying directly over point D on the ground. So it's not flying on the ground. It's above point D on the ground, and it's five kilometers above the ground. So this perpendicular height between D and J is five kilometers. It is heading to land at point K. So it's going to come down there and land over there at point K. The angle of depression from J to K is 8 degrees. Now, guys, remember the angle of depression is always from the perfect horizontal down. So that angle of depression is 8 degrees. And they say that S is a point along the route. Now, what they've done for us here is they've shown us that this dotted line, or J, is parallel to S. But, guys, one can assume that because we're assuming that the ground is horizontal and that this is horizontal because the angle of depression is measured from the horizontal. So that's where we start at. So let's have a look here. The first thing is they ask us to write down the size of angle JKD. 
right, J, K, D. So that means we are wanting the size of that angle. Guys, you've been doing geometry for a while now. Think of all your geometry rules, especially the ones that you apply when you've got parallel lines. What we have here is our classic Z shape. So that angle over there is alternate to the 8 degree angle at the top here. So angle K is equal to 8 degrees. They didn't actually ask us for a reason. But if they did, we would have said alternate angles, and that's because this line is parallel to that line. It's only for one mark, so we didn't expect anything huge. Right. Then they ask us to calculate the distance DK. And very interesting, they say calculate it correct to the nearest meter. Now this could catch people up because our other information is actually in kilometers. So it's fine, we can calculate DK in kilometers, no problem. But at the end we need to convert our answer to meters to answer the question properly. Right, guys, now, if you find multiple triangles confusing, not that this one is, I've got the 8 degrees over here, I've got the 5 kilometers over here, and DK is the side on the horizontal plane. So, if you are standing over here, you have got the opposite side, and the side that you are looking for is adjacent. So now you need to ask yourself which trig ratio uses opposite and adjacent and that is of course tan. So you're going to say tan of 8 degrees is equal to 5 kilometers over the adjacent which is dk. And now all you need to do is you need to make dk the subject of the equation. So you're going to cross multiply and you're going to get dk tan 8 is equal to 5. Fine. So that means that dk is going to be equal to 5 over tan 8. And we're going to grab our calculator. This we definitely can't do without a calculator. So we're going to put in our 5 over tan 8 degrees. And I get 35,5768, blah, blah. But now I need to remember that this is in kilometers. So don't round off until you've put it into meters. Remember that there are 1,000 meters in a kilometer. So correct to the nearest meter, which is what the question actually asks, is then 35577 meters. So that's 35. Five, five, seven, seven meters if I round it off. Right. Otherwise, if we still want to, if we still want to work in the next question in kilometers, that's also fine, but we'll just have to convert back. But remember that the question actually did ask to the nearest meter, so they want to see if you guys are paying attention. Right. The next question says, if the distance SK is 8 kilometers, calculate the distance DS. Now, guys, that's pretty straightforward. Um, they are asking us for this distance over here. They are telling us that SK is 8 kilometers. And we know that the entire distance we've just calculated. So, what, so that is, well, we can say it's 35,5, shall we round? We'll say 35,58 kilometers. You could, again, change the 8 kilometers to 8,000 meters as well. That's fine. So basically, all we need to get our distance ds is to take the distance dk, which is 35,58 kilometers, and subtract h from it. And very straightforward. They're just actually helping you. That's 27,58 meters. So all I've done is I've subtracted the 8. Sorry, kilometers. All I've done is I've subtracted the 8. So you've got to keep track of are you using, are you working in meters or are you working in kilometers? Right. 
The next question then says, calculate the angle of elevation from point S to J, correct to one decimal place. Now guys, you need to see that that is the angle that we're looking for. It's the angle from the horizontal that you have to look up by in order to have your line of sight onto J. So again, if the triangles are confusing you, don't worry about it too much. We know that this is five kilometers over here, and we have just calculated 27,58 kilometers over here, and that is our unknown angle over there. So that's fine. You place yourself at this vantage point, and you say, what do I have? I've got the opposite, and I've also got the adjacent. And which trig ratio uses opposite and adjacent? That is, of course, tan. So we're going to say tan of, let's call our unknown angle, x is equal to 5, that's the opposite, over the adjacent, which is 27,58. And just remember, the top and the bottom either need to be both in kilometers or both in meters, otherwise you're going to have some strange answers. Right, and we're going to go straight to our calculator. We're looking for an angle again, so we're using shift, so we're saying tan, shift tan or arc tan of, and 5 over 27,58. Ooh, don't, we don't want to close the bracket there. Let me just do this properly. And there we have our answer. Again, if we're working to one decimal place, if that's 10,275, then I'm going to say angle X is 10,3 degrees. So really, guys, there's nothing much to it. Um, it's a practical situation, yes, but what are we doing? We're just using our trig ratios. Obviously, you need to know what sine, cos, and tan are. Otherwise, you're going to have a hard time just getting out of the starting blocks. Right, now, as far as I know, I think that is... It's for our trigonometry today, and we're going to have to take a break quite soon. But just let's just have a read through this question a little bit. So we've got a four-sided figure, a quadrilateral. Remember, we need to know the properties of a quadrilateral. They say PQRS is a kite such that the diagonals intersect at O. Now, I think if nothing else, what you guys need to do while we take a short break is ha look up the properties of a kite. What do we know about a kite, right? That's what you guys need to do. And then we're going to look at how to apply these properties of a kite to solve the question. Abram, how are we doing? Are, are everybody do fine with the trigonometry so far? There are some questions that need, uh, that the mindset just said they don't understand, like uh, question one, uh, they say it was a, a, a bit fast. Question one was a bit fast? Yes. Oh my goodness, I thought I spent too long <laughs> on it. Okay. Yeah, but it, it's and that one. And please feel free to interrupt me if there are questions. No problem. But go. otherwise, as we're well, we about to take that break, remember after the ad break, we're doing the draw. So if you've ad entered for the draw already, uh, keep your thumbs up and your fingers crossed because you might be one, uh, the winner of the Galaxy Note 8.0. So stay tuned. Hello, women sisters, and welcome back. For the first time, I actually feel like a teacher standing here. It's so great, you know, Lizzo. I didn't know the feeling. It's fine. I am a bit tired. We should you swap can it. take. You can take the show home. I'll I'll take it on the kite. We're yeah. gonna do it after. But now, exciting news for you, my sisters. We're doing the draw. As promised to you, we're giving away this awesome Samsung Galaxy uh, Note 8.0. Proudly brought to you by Samsung, and it is whereby we are saying we're going the distance together. So now, Lizzo. I don't um, want to seem like we have all the names of the people that entered for the draw. So we're just going to... Can you? Can I shake it again? No, no, I'm not looking. Look, oh, there's okay. a camera on me. I've got one out. Okay. And I'm going to leave the name to you. All right. And the winner of this awesome Samsung Galaxy Note 8.0 is Ritabile Mukwena. Congratulations to you, Ritabile Mukwena. This awesome cool prize is coming to you and will be in contact. Proudly brought to you by Samsung, whereby we're saying Samsung and Mindset, that's where fantastic, uh, fantastic content meets fantastic technology. 
Fantastic. I Great. wish I was Retabile. All right. Nothing wrong with that <laughs> at all. Right, guys. So before the break, we were chatting about PQRS, which is a kite. We are told that the diagonals of the kite intersect at zero. We are told that the side length OS is two centimeters, that this angle OPS is 20 degrees, and let's have a look at the question. Now guys, they're actually very nice that they're telling us that this is a kite, and that they're putting in a whole lot of information. So they, they're putting in that this side is equal to this side, and this side is equal to that side. That's really nice of them. Just by the fact that it is a kite, we need to know that. We need to know that the adjacent sides are equal in length, right? We also need to know about a kite, that the diagonals intersect at 90 degrees, and that the longer diagonal halves the shorter diagonal. So those are some properties that you should be thinking of. Right. The first question says, write down the distance of OQ. So they want this distance. Okay. Now, as I've just said to you guys, properties of a kite... These are things we should know. The adjacent sides are equal in length. The diagonals intersect at 90 degrees. And the longer diagonal halves the shorter diagonal. So that means if it's given to me that OS is 2 centimeters, OQ must be 2 centimeters as well. Now, guys, unless they tell me otherwise, I do have to give a reason. So I'm going to say OQ is 2 centimeters. And my reason is... The long diagonal I'm writing it out bisects the shorter diagonal. And of course, it's the long diagonal of a cut that bisects the shorter diagonal. So that's very cool. I'm going to write that in here. Let's do that straight away. That is two centimeters. Right, now the next question also says write down. Now guys, write down means this is stuff that you should know. Okay, so we are told to write down the size of angle POQ. POQ, so that's this angle over here. And as I was just saying to you guys before, that the diagonals of a kite intersect at right angles. So I'm going to say... POQ is equal to 90 degrees, and my reason is diagonals of kite intersect at 90 degrees. Right. Guys, so this absolutely should be at your fingertips. They're really just testing now whether we know our properties of a kite. Nothing more. The final question says to us, write down the size of angle QPS. So that is this entire angle over here. Right, so we've spoken about the properties of a kite. We've said the adjacent sides are equal in length. Fine. We've said that the diagonals intersect at 90 degrees. We've said that the longer diagonal bisects, that means cuts in half, the shorter diagonal. Another property that we haven't spoken about just yet is the fact that the longer diagonal also bisects the angles. So that means this diagonal PR cuts the angle R in half and also cuts the angle P in half. So... If this were P1, which they're given to us as 20, we could say that P2 is also equal to 20 degrees. That is because the longer diagonal cuts the angle in half. So let's write that down. And we're going to get straight on with it. We're going to say QPO is equal to 20 degrees. Okay, so that's... QPO, just to show you guys, that's that angle over there. QPO is equal to 20 degrees. And the reason is longer diagonal 
maybe we should write of a kite bisects the angles and therefore it follows automatically that angle Q, uh, that QPS is 20 plus 20 which is 40 degrees right so really guys this question wasn't a hard one what did we test we tested whether you knew your properties of a kite so let's go over it again adjacent sides are equal in length diagonals intersect at 90 degrees longer diagonal halves the shorter diagonal and bisects the angles on either side right so that wasn't too bad we're going to move on to our next question which is actually an analytical geometry question this question comes to us without a sketch what does make it a little bit easier is if you do draw a sketch that makes that is going to simplify your life a little bit and they are talking in this question about point C which is the point where X is 1 and Y is minus 2 so let's plot that over there so they say C is the point 1 minus 2 then they say D lies in the second quadrant and has the coordinate x5. Now, guys, this is the second quadrant. So x and 5. Those are the coordinates of D. Fine. Then they tell us that the length of CD, the length of CD is root 53 units. And the question is to calculate the value of x. Now, guys, we're dealing here with the distance formula. The most straightforward way of asking the distance formula is giving us two sets of coordinates and asking us the distance. But that's not very exciting. So what we can do is leave out one of the coordinates, either the x or the y, give you guys the distance, and ask you to solve the equation. It really doesn't make it any harder. Right. So, the distance formula says to us that the distance DC will be given by, and we'll write down the distance formula, the one x coordinate minus the other squared plus the one coordinate, y coordinate minus the other squared as well. Now, guys, because we are solving for x, and this x is going to be underneath the square root. What I'm going to do from the beginning is I'm going to square both sides. So instead of the distance, which is root 53, I'm going to use the distance squared, which is then 53 units, because I'm working with an equation. So as long as I do the same thing on either side, there's no problem. So I'm going to apply the rule on the right-hand side, but without the square root. And I'm going to go for it starting at d. It doesn't matter where you start as long as you use the same point first the whole time. So I'm going to say the x value at D, which is x, minus the x value at C, which is 1, and all of that squared. Plus, now I need to start again with the y coordinate at D, so that's 5, minus, minus 2. So 5 minus minus 2 is actually going to give me plus 2. Now, guys, when you square out here, just do it properly. Don't forget about the middle term. So this is x squared minus 2x plus 1. Some people just square the x and square the 1. Forget about the middle term, and of course, that's not a great idea. And then inside this bracket, I get 5 and 2, which is 9, and 9 squared. I get 5 and 2, which is 9. Ha, ha. 5 and 2, which is 7, and 7 squared, which is 49. I'm going to say I was just thinking ahead. Right, so 0 on this side, x squared minus 2x. This gives me 50. If I bring the minus 53 over, then I get minus 3. Then I need to factorize this trinomial. That gives me x and x. I'm going to go with minus 3 plus 1. That's perfect. So I get two possible options for x. x could either be 3 or x could be minus 1. 
But now we've got to think realistically, guys. In the question, they did actually say to us that this is a point in the second quadrant. And remember, in the second quadrant, if we look at our quadrants, we are dealing with the negative x-axis. So it's actually not possible, given the information that they gave me, that x could be equal to 3. x has to comply with whatever a second quadrant x-coordinate would be, so that would be x is minus 1. Right. I hope you guys followed. Abram, quickly uh, over to you. Tiamo just asked now, where does the 2x come from? Oh, <laughs> that's what everybody forgets. Right, that's fine. Tiamo, I am happy. I had the bracket x minus 1 squared, right? I think everybody saw that. Now, x minus 1 squared is x minus 1 times x minus 1, right? Now, if you write it out, you won't get it wrong. And if you multiply this out, it gives you x squared. It gives you plus 1. Then you get a middle minus 1x and an outer term minus 1x. And that's the x squared minus 2x plus 1. So what I was saying earlier is many people, when they square x minus 1 bracket squared, they square the x. They square the 1, but they forget about the middle term. Guys, it's crucial. That is, that is a big mathematical sin to multiply out that bracket incorrectly. That's the <laughs> mathematical equivalent of robbing from grannies. You just don't do it. If you feel the temptation, rather write out the two brackets and do your rule first with first, last with last, the inner two and the outer two. Right, guys. And then remember... The reason why I discounted the answer x is equal to 3 is because they specifically told me that that point lies in the second quadrant, and in the second quadrant, I'm dealing with negative x values. Any other questions, Abram? Are we good to go? We're good to go. Right. Now, guys, the next question is one of those geometry questions that make people want to make all sorts of faces. <laughs> And I understand that, guys, sometimes we are overwhelmed by all the lines. My biggest tip for you guys with geometry is invest in a set of highlighters. Guys, it really, really does make it easier if you can highlight the different shapes in different colors. It really does clarify things. Right, so we are told in the diagram below, BCDE as well as AODE are parallelograms. So let's start there. B, C, D, E. Okay. So I've highlighted in pink there my parallelogram. The first thing that I need to think about is what are the properties of parallelograms. The opposite sides are equal. The opposite sides are parallel. The diagonals bisect each other. So that's the list that you need to start running through your head. They also say to us that AODE is a parallelogram. So I'm going to say A, O, D, E. Okay, so what I've done is I've literally just gone and I've highlighted my two parallelograms and I'm keeping in mind what are the properties of parallelograms. Fine. So let's have a look at the first question. The first question asks me to prove that OF is parallel to AB. So over here is OF, and I need to prove that it's parallel to AB. Right, guys, now, once you sort of highlighted the a, B, and the O, F. Hopefully this will trigger something, and I want you guys to think of the midpoint formula. Oh, I'm sorry, of the midpoint theorem, rather, the midpoint formula. I'm thinking analytical geometry. Remember what the midpoint theorem says to us. The midpoint theorem says that if I connect the midpoint of one side of a triangle with the midpoint of the other side of the triangle, then that line that I've connected will be, this line, will be parallel to this side. 
So whenever we're dealing with parallelograms, this is something to think about is your midpoint theorem. So now let's have a look here quickly. Do you guys agree with me that O has to be the midpoint of the line BD? So what I'm saying is BO is equal to OD. BO is equal to OD. The reason for that is because the entire line BD is a diagonal of the parallelogram, and we know that diagonals bisect each other. So that's where I'm going to start. I'm going to start by saying BO, I'm going to say O is the midpoint of BD. My reason is diagonals of a parallelogram, and remember, parallelogram can be ab abbreviated to POM. So that's the first thing that I've done, is I've said, right, O is the midpoint of that line, BD, Y, it's a, par um, it's a diagonal of a POM, and because there's more than one parallelogram, actually best we say which one, so I'm going to say which one, so I'm going to use B, C, D, E, B, C, D, E, B, C, D. Right, now I'm going to have a look at this line over here, AD. Now what you should notice is that AD is also a diagonal. It's a diagonal of my smaller yellow palm. So I can now say that F is the midpoint of the line AD. Reason is also diagonals of palms, so that's the same reason, but I've got to use which palm it is, so I'm going to say that it is AOD. So diagonals of palm AOD. Now, if you guys just look now quickly, what I've got over here is the situation here. I've got the line joining the two midpoints, and that, so, so I've got a triangle, right? I've got a line joining the midpoints of the sides, and that then means from the midpoint theorem that this is parallel to that. I want to see if I can try and highlight this a bit. So basically what we're going to say is we're going to end up with, we're going to say OF is parallel to AB and our reason is the line joining the midpoints of a triangle is parallel to the third side. Guys, unfortunately we only got to the first question, but that's fine. We did a lot of quite long questions, so I'm hoping that you guys will download the notes, keep in contact and keep working towards the exam. Abram, Thank I can't you so believe much. it's over so quickly. Well, time flies, especially when you're learning so much. Otherwise, man says, I need to stress this out. We've now passed our leg two of the competition. Remember, it is a marathon, exam marathon competition. We're now on to the last leg, which is not really the last leg, it's the third leg, which is leg three, whereby we're also giving away another device. So if you, could, you didn't win this awesome Galaxy Note uh, 8.0, don't worry, you can still enter again now because you enter once, pair leg. So from us to you, we just want to say thank you very much and also to Samsung. We really appreciate. We'll see you some other time. Cheers.